Hi, welcome to this episode of Thai Food. Today we're going to start doing chicken so we can make pulled chicken tacos. Um, so this is the first part of this. What you want to do is you want to take an onion. This is a good size onion as you can tell when I put the two halves together here. It's, you know, about a large onion. And you want to take and it said to put it, I mean I looked at several recipes before I tried to make this here and they said to just throw the whole half of onion in there but I want to try to optimize as much onion flavor out of this so I'm going to make a few slices here so that this will open up in the water and that way there I can try to get as much onion flavor out of that um, I'm going to put this on a high to try to get the uh, water come into a boil here and I've got that one prepped I'm going to take this one I'm going to give it a quick chop and that's going to be for later when we make the uh, pulled chicken tacos here. Kind of make my cross slices here. And then I can chop it up. And this is going to get sautéed in a pan later before we add our pulled chicken to it. And uh, of course, gonna put it in there with a tomato and some other stuff as well. But I figured I'd take the opportunity now to get this prepped while I'm waiting for my water to heat up. Try to maximize my time. And you can see I've got an induction burner that this water is heating up on. And it should heat it up fairly quickly, especially since. I already preheated it checking out the burner because I just got this and uh, I'd like to say thank you to Matt and Sam Trilla for donating that to the cause here. So just about done chopping our onion here. And uh, we're also going to prep a piece of, a, or a, I should say a couple cloves of garlic to go in with this in the water and uh, every recipe I looked at they all boiled the chicken one way or another and uh, this was pretty much the simplest way to do it and uh, you can see I got some uh, green garlic here don't be alarmed by the color green um, it was a failed attempt at making my own pickled garlic and it still tasted like raw garlic when you bit into it so the, the vinegar didn't even penetrate or anything um, so it's not wasted. I'm going to use it. So just kind of crush that a little bit here so you can maximize your garlic flavor you're going to get out of this. And all the green color is, is it's just the dill that was in the vinegar. So I could probably reuse that solution, add a little more vinegar to it and make dill pickles. Um, I'll have to research better on how to make pickled garlic apparently. So now that we got all that prepped, I'm going to go ahead and put the chicken on this cutting board because I'm done cutting vegetables. And I just want to trim some of the fat off of this. So we don't want all this chicken fat in there when we make these. So we're going to go ahead and trim some of this off. And it's a nice treat for the cats anyways. They really enjoy that. So just go ahead and trim some of that fat off. not a whole lot on this one that's not a bad thing and I got two large chicken breast lobes here um, if you were to buy a whole chicken and take the breast off yourself this is what you'd end up with is you know two chicken breast lobes here and I can see my water starting to come to a boil so that's a good thing like I said I did kind of preheat the, the water too so that helped me I was you know, checking out the burner, making sure I had a pot that would work on it. Alright, so we got that one ready to go. Let's get this one prepped. You can see this one's a lot larger than the other one. Now, these are going to sit in the liquid and, you know, kind of simmer for about 45 minutes with the, the garlic and the onion there. And then uh, you discard the garlic and the onion afterwards. Um, because you pretty much used it for all you can use it for at that point. 
Yeah. Well, like I said, there ain't, isn't a whole lot of fat on these to really trim off. But there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the water with this. And you kind of want to make sure you got enough water to cover this when you put this in. Get the onion nestled in there and a couple cloves of garlic. And I can see already I need to add some more water to this. You want to make sure the chicken is covered. And that pretty much covered it right there. Just grab a little bit more. I'm going to bump this up to the sear function on this cooker. I just need to add a little bit more. And the onion's floating at the moment, but probably won't be when I'm done. There we go. Alright, so at this point I'm going to wash my hand really quick. Get the chicken juice off of it. Now there is one more ingredient I'm going to add and I'm sure most of my regular viewers have already guessed it and that's my black gold liquid seasoning that I've got here. Give this a little shake and I'm going to add a tablespoon of this right in to this water. And that's going to help add a little bit of smokiness to this and some really great flavor. Plus it'll help tenderize the chicken as well. And that's all we're going to put into there and put our lid on. And because I got some moisture on here, I'm giving this a little spin. Um, this is kind of a, a fancy lid anyways. I've got four different settings. Um, I can do a vent. This is another like pressurized sort of vent. And then you know that's another like normal vent so it's got like two normal vent on here for like boiling pots or whatever and it's got like a pressure cook function and it's a low pressure sort of pressure cooker and I'm gonna put it on that to try to you know cut down on the boil time for the chicken um, normally everyone said to just boil it at normal um, rate for 45 minutes um, I'm probably gonna do this for about 30 minutes and then the chicken should be cooked enough at that point that I can take and you know pull, let it cool down obviously and then you pull the chicken apart and just shred it to make the tacos so that's about all we're going to do for this um, part of the video and uh, I'm going to let this cook up and everything and then uh, once it's done cooking I'm going to pull it, let it cool down and then I'll shoot part two of the video as you can see I've got my chicken I already pulled most of it, saves me a little time here for this. Um, before I finish pulling that, I'm going to start preheating the skillet here. Get it on, a, I'm going to put it about 275. I've got a tablespoon of butter in there already, and i got a half tablespoon measure here. I'm just going to add a tablespoon of this roasted garlic oil that I've got, that I've been keep it in my refrigerator that's why it's all crystallized like it is get that in there and get it heating up I know it's going to heat up relatively fast so I'm going to work on finish pulling the chicken here um, you can see it if you've cooked it plenty long enough it just pulls right apart nice and easy you know not too much work at all um, I had two chicken breasts um, the one was a little bit bigger than the other one. Um, I would recommend, if you need to, to cut them down so they're about the same sizes when it comes to cooking them. Because that other one, even though it was cooked all the way, it just did not pull as easy as this one did. This one obviously got cooked a lot more than the other one did, and it's easier to pull for me. So, um, Also, the other thing I would recommend is let it cool down in the liquid that you boil it in because it'll you know, be able to absorb more of that flavor from the liquid as it cools down. It'll suck in some more juice. Because um, you know, when a meat cooks, it tightens right up, expels all its juices. So I would definitely recommend you know, letting it, uh, let me spin this around real quick. It's getting heated up pretty good here. Um, but anyways, 
you let it cool down in the liquid and it'll uh, definitely you know absorb more flavor. Um, this is that half of onion that you saw me dice up in the first part that I just put in there. And uh, I'm going to add some uh, salt and pepper to this. And the salt's going to help just pull some of the liquid out of it as you cook this. And however much pepper you want to add is your choice. Um, I'm adding enough to at least give it some flavor. It will give it a little bit of spice, but not a whole lot. Go ahead and stir this up here. Let this get sautéed. You want to let this go until it's translucent, and then we're going to add in some garlic to it. And uh, while I'm letting that cook a little bit here, I'm going to finish pulling this chicken. Have this all ready to go. And uh, it's going to take a little bit to get that to where we want it anyways. I just want to keep an eye on it though, because you don't want nothing to burn. And it is going to expel some moisture and such. And you want to definitely save that liquid that you cooked or boiled the chicken in because if you need to add more liquid to this later on you can add some of that liquid into this and it adds some of the flavor from what we cooked the chicken into. So it's never a bad thing. Not only that but you, if you bottle it up while it's still hot in a mason jar and you put your lid on it, it'll seal itself. And you can put it right in the fridge after that and if you decide a week or two weeks from now that you want to make pulled chicken tacos again, pull that liquid out. And then you can always, you know, add another half an onion to it, one clove of garlic, and uh, the flavor from last time will still be there, and it'll help flavor the next batch of chicken. And uh, you just add whatever extra water you need to, a little bit more of the black gold if you happen to have it handy. Um, obviously you can make this without the black gold. Um, you know, I've often said to people that you know, don't have the black gold just yet. Um, you could substitute just plain old Worcestershire sauce. You know, that's always a possibility as well. But, I mean, obviously, black gold's got a lot more to it than that. But, you know, it's an okay substitute. It'll get you closer, anyways, than not having it at all. But, you can see it's, you know, mostly pulled here. I don't want huge chunks. I'm sure it'll break down some more as I, you know, put it in there and cook it. But just trying to make sure I get it all pulled at this point. Keep the chitter chatter going as I'm working. Um, you can see in front of me I've got a can of tomatoes with the green chilies. They're diced tomatoes with green chilies in them. Uh, if you've seen my uh, chili um, sauce one for Texas Hots then you'll know I've used this before. And you can just get it right at the local Walmart. This recipe called for a Serrano chili pepper. And, well, I don't really buy those because I'm the only one that eats hot peppers and I probably wouldn't use the whole thing because we don't really do a lot of spiciness here. So, that's kind of why I didn't buy a chili pepper. I'm going to turn the temperature down on this to 225 because I'm starting to get them to caramelize at this point. And now I need to get my uh, garlic going here. So I'm going to set that off to the side, put my chicken scraps in it. You can see i got two cloves of garlic here. And uh, just going to give it a quick flattening here. The one went a little more than I wanted to, but we're going to chop this up anyway. So. And this is, you know, green garlic. Like I said, it was a failed attempt to make pickled garlic. And it had absolutely no vinegar flavor in here whatsoever. It just tasted like I was eating a raw clove of garlic. Couldn't taste no flavor other than garlic. Raw garlic. So, like I said, I'm going to have to revisit making my own pickled garlic sometime. But until that happens, I'm just going to use this in my cooking. Because since it tastes like garlic, I'll get my garlic flavor. And it's kind of preserved in a vinegar brine solution. So, And the only reason it's green is because I had some uh, dill weed in there. You know, I was trying to make a 
a dill pickle flavored garlic, kind of. Um, I didn't reuse any pickle juice. I just kind of made my own pickling solution. But, like I said, uh, it was a attempt. And uh, sounds like I've got that turned down way too low now. Bump it up just a little bit. Cooking process is slowing down. It started getting quiet in here. But, so we're going to dice this up. And the nice green color of the garlic will add a little bright hue to this. But, you know, you just kind of want to give it a fairly decent chop. You don't want big chunks of garlic in there, but you want it to be able to release its garlic flavor, you know. And I'm going to go in with it. Get that cooking in there. I can already smell it now that I got it in there. And you want to get this to the point where it starts to caramelize. You know, get the golden brown color in this. So between the garlic oil and the two cloves of garlic that I just put in, we're getting a nice base for flavor. Make sure everything's off of there. And uh, let me rinse my hands real quick. Give them a quick rinse since I was touching cooked products, so I don't really need to soap them. I'll dry them off here. And I forgot to pull out the oregano. There we are. Um, all the recipes I was looking at, all of them said a Mexican oregano. I'm pretty sure this is an Italian oregano because it doesn't specify. And they also said it will usually specify Mexican oregano if that's indeed what it is. But um, at this point, we pretty much almost got the you know, onions and garlic in here right where we want it as far as cooked doneness. And uh, we're going to take and add a teaspoon of the oregano and let it heat up with the oil in here and bloom, as they call it. And that's what they said to do. Um, they said you could substitute the Italian for the Mexican. It's just a little bit of a different floral in it. That's the only difference between the two from what I was reading. So here I've got a teaspoon, and I'm just going to kind of pinch it as I put it in here. And I'm kind of going by... I here. I don't think I'm going to use this full teaspoon here. I think uh, half a teaspoon will be plenty for this. I don't want to overpower it, so I'm just going to put the rest back in. So, if you want a full teaspoon, use a full teaspoon. I'm just going to go with a half. You know, going by my judgment here of what's in here, I don't think you need a full teaspoon of that. Um, they did say to use a full teaspoon of the Mexican oregano. But I guess it's not as bright and floral as the Italian. Don't know. Never used it. But we also have some chili powder here. And uh, they said to use a full teaspoon of chili powder with this. And I'm going to make sure it's good and level because I don't want to uh, get this too spicy again on my wife and children. Although my son wouldn't mind it too much. And a teaspoon of cumin. And this is a toasted ground cumin. Now, I'm trying to recreate some chicken tacos that I had at a local Mexican restaurant. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't speak good enough Spanish to try to ask them how they make them. And uh, I probably should one of these times I'm in there and see what I can get out of it. But from what I've read online in a lot of the forums, most people have asked and they don't get told a whole lot. I guess if they give away their secret, then you'll just make it at home and you won't go see them. But what difference does it make when it's Taco Tuesdays and tacos are only a dollar there? You know? You can eat pretty cheap as far as I'm concerned. So at this point, I'm gonna bump up the heat a little bit again back to 275. And I'm going in with the chicken. 
and you can see it's a lot of chicken here. So it's going to do pretty well to make some tacos. I just want to coat this a little bit with the seasonings. And at this point, I want to add my tomatoes. And you're going to go juice and all, because that juice is going to help hydrate this chicken. And that's about the right amount of tomatoes in here. You don't want to overpower it. Now, there are some people in my family who have a tomato allergy. And at this point, I probably would have just added some smoked paprika to give it the red color. And I still may yet. In fact, I, I'm probably going to now that I'm looking at it. Because it doesn't quite have the red hue that I want it to have. And I'm going to have to add some liquid that we use to boil this as well try to get the flavor here that I'm looking for but the seasoning on this is ever so slight it's not going to be like an overpowering flavor like you get when you use the taco packets and I'm liking the way this looks I'll be honest with you this is this is looking a lot like what I was going for so let me just come back here to my boiling liquid that I used. Grab me a measuring cup and dish them out. Hey, look at that, not bad. I got about a cup of the liquid here and I'm gonna put about a cup in there. You can hear it simmering, boiling kind of. And that's not a bad thing, that's kind of what we're going for here. Because you can kind of cook off the liquid that you don't want, and it'll concentrate the flavor in it too. Not only that, but it'll help soak into the chicken. Because, you know, anybody who's worked with chicken breast knows how dry it can get. But, anytime I've had the chicken tacos, they're always really, really moist. Because you can tell they use the liquid. Just need to bump this up another 100 degrees to 375 here. I always make constant adjustments when I'm cooking. You never want to have the heat too low, and you don't want to have it too high either. And this is uh, really smelling like what I'm looking for anyways. That smells terrific. This is what I'm going for. So, I'm just going to let this cook, reduce down a little bit more, and get the full flavor into the chicken here. And uh, we'll take a brief pause and I'll come back to you in just a little bit here. Hold tight. Okay. So we've pretty much got all the liquid reduced down to where I want to be at this point. I'm going to go ahead and add some smoked paprika. I'm going to add one teaspoon of it into this. And that will give it a nice red hue that I'm looking for. As well as add some nice smoky flavor to this as well. But, oh that smells good. Um, this is pretty much what it looks like when I get in the restaurant as well. You know, the chicken's in a nice, flavorful liquid. It's got, you know, it's not overbearing with flavor. But, you know, at the same time, it's still delicious. Put some lettuce on here, some salsa, and some cheese, and it's good to go as far as I'm concerned. Um, a little guacamole if you want that sort of thing. Um, I, I never really get it in the restaurant, so I'm just going to have it without, even though i got some in the fridge in little cups. Because, again... I'm the only one that eats that in this family. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off. And you'll hear this simmer die down here. 
And there we are. So I got just a little bit of liquid in here, but it's not drowning. You know, you can see it dripping off the chicken. That's exactly what you're looking for. Just the right amount of liquid. So, at this point, I'm going to get one of these and uh, plate it up real quick. Thank you, sweetheart. Let's uh, get some stuff out of my way, too, I guess. Some stuff I'm not using anymore. And like I said, I'm going to save that boiling liquid. It's still hot enough. I can put it in a large mason jar and save it. Because I have a feeling I might be making these again shortly here. And uh, I like iceberg lettuce myself. You can put whatever kind of lettuce you want on there. It's all your choice. But me, I'm going with iceberg. Most of the time we don't have the iceberg here because my wife prefers romaine. So that's usually what I have on there. I don't complain, I just eat it. It's supposed to be healthy for me. I don't see where it's helped. But, it is what it is. Um, I don't mind ice or uh, romaine in my salads though. You know, I like to mix romaine in there with the iceberg. I like to mix, uh, you know, fresh spinach in there as well. So. I got this depackaged. Slice a hunk off. And uh, there we go. And I like to slice this into thin ribbons as much as possible here. If I had a, uh, a deli slicer, I'd probably just chalk it on that and run it through the deli slicer. And then I wouldn't have to worry about not cutting the tips of my fingers off at this point. And that's probably enough for me to make one taco here. I'll cut the rest off up when I'm off camera. So it's real simple the way they usually plate this. They take a little bit of the chicken and put it on the taco. Like so. And then Usually put your lettuce on there. And then you usually get it with cheese on there. All I have here is an extra sharp cheddar. Uh, actually, I believe it's a seriously sharp cheddar. You know, a big old hunk of it. So we're just going to grate some in here to put on my taco. Stick it back in the bag for now. And you can put a little or a lot, your choice, however much cheese you like. I like a fair amount. That's definitely a fair amount. And uh, just stick this back on here somehow. Got on there once before. There we go. I may have overdone it with the the uh, cheese there, and then I'm just going to put some sour cream right along the top here. There we are. A little. All right. I'll throw it on the counter too. Heck with the taco. Better on the counter, right? Not. I definitely know the taco tastes better than the counter. There we are. All right. The only thing I'm missing is some salsa. Give me a second while I rummage through the fridge. I know I got some here somewhere. There we are. How about a nice roasted salsa verde? Um, this is a fairly old jar, but they still have the Sam's Choice roasted salsa verde. So we're just going to put a little drizzle of this on here. Just like so. And voila. There's my taco. Now let's see what this tastes like. 
See if I nailed the point that I was going for here. I'm going to make a mess, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. Definitely recommend. Don't get scared like I did. Go for the full teaspoon of the oregano. It'll use it. But real close. Real close. Thanks for tuning in. Feel free to subscribe to my Thai food channel on YouTube here. Don't forget to like the videos if you like them. Comment. Leave me feedback. Check out my Facebook page. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Have a good one.